today we'll be talking about food. Oh, yes. And we have a food expert today. No, Peter. no, yeah, no. Oh, I think, yeah. I'll accept cooking expert, but I am not a food expert. I have a very strange sense of taste, as we're about to discover. Okay. I, th I guess we'll find out more. Yes, about that. definitely. So, have you had lunch today? Just about. I had a very rushed lunch. In fact, this entire week has been a rush, so I've been eating very badly. A lot of junk food this week. Normally, I like to cook for myself. So in my ideal week, I'll prepare some sort of soup the night before mm. or early in the week. And then to spread that out throughout the week, I might add pasta to that soup uh, and have that with maybe an apple and some biscuits at lunch. Pretty basic, but that's my lunch when I have time to plan. This week it's just been chips and burgers and takeouts, unfortunately. Oh, while we, Yeah, <laughs> while we get all these assessments done, so it's been a stressful week. Oh, right. And in Ukraine we have a stereotype that in Britain, like, lords and posh people, they eat oatmeal and, okay. <laughs> and tea, and drink a lot of tea. Oh, okay. Is that true? British people drink a lot of tea. In fact, it's one of the few bits of slang you'll find from the British middle mm. class, the concept of builder's tea. A mm. strong cup of tea that is much stronger than the tea you get in Ukraine, mm. uh, drank primarily by people who are working class or manual mm. labourers, so not exactly lords. <laughs> and the idea that lords eat oatmeal, <laughs> I mean, we have porridge, which is basically yeah. the same thing. But in Britain, it's traditionally thought of as Scottish. Mm. Sort of. Everyone eats oatmeal. Everyone eats porridge. My mother eats a lot of porridge. I mean, if it makes you a lord, and that's good for me. Yeah, but I do I'm that every morning. There's no truth to it. Sorry, that's just some good branding for mm. porridge. And what are the most popular meals in the UK? You'd be surprised. A lot of people know about the traditional British meals, they think of fish and chips, mm -hmm. the nation's yeah. favourite food, chips are great, uh, but one of the most popular meals, even on a Sunday, is not always roast dinner, but curry. Oh. If I remember my statistics correctly, I believe curry became one of the most popular dishes in the UK, more so than our normal traditional dishes, which involve a lot mm -hmm. of beef, a lot of potatoes. Uh, other dishes, you might find steak and kidney pudding, or steak oh. and kidney pie. <laughs> yes, uh, we also like a lot of Chinese food in the UK, but it's very British-based Chinese food, so it might not look anything like food that actually comes from China. Mm -hmm. And we have plenty of breakfast foods, like porridge, as you know. Different parts of the UK have different variations on the full English. Before I come to Ukraine, before I fly back, I always make sure to have a big full English breakfast at a local restaurant uh, that I go to. Yeah, I was terrified by the size. You've seen uh, the photos? No, no. Uh, I've been to London. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. It was terrifying. Well, uh, so, do you know what's in a full English breakfast? Uh, fried bacon, eggs... You've got uh, bacon, yes. But it's back bacon. Not the kind of bacon you get here in America. It's got a lot more meat to it. Eggs, that's right. Uh, yeah, uh, and then I guess beans. Beans, baked oh, beans. Tomatoes. Uh, sometimes tomatoes. Yes, tomatoes can be in there. Uh, and black pudding or something like that. Black pudding, yes. Black pudding, yeah. And I can't recall. Sausages. Ah, sausages. And sometimes a couple of mushrooms. And I like to order an extra round of hash brown, so bits of potato as well. Uh, you can also get toast. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I have plenty of that with strong tea and some tomato ketchup, tomato sauce. That, that does it for me. That's too much for me. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, a special treat, an indulgence. You can't eat that every day. It's mm -hmm. very good for your health. And how would you describe your country's food in general? Now, Britain has a bad reputation for food, especially among Americans. They think that it's all very bland, it's very dull. I think Britain has quite a good cuisine. Mm. And I think it's been affected by lots of things in our history. If you go back 200 years, the variety of foods was actually much greater mm -hmm. grown and eaten in Britain in the Victorian era. And then, obviously, we had the wars, we had rationing. 
And so naturally, portions actually got smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like the cuisine of Britain. However, it is very starchy. There's um, a lot of meat. There's a lot mm -hmm. of potatoes, as I said. And if you have gotten used to potatoes, let's say, if you've eaten mm -hmm. them all your life, you want to start eating different things. So that's one of the benefits of coming to Ukraine. I get to experience lots of replacements for potatoes. Mm -hmm. I get to eat some buckwheat. I get to try some different things. So it's a bit of variety for me. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with potatoes, but if you have them nearly every other meal, <laughs> you can get bored of anything. Yeah, that's true. And what are the most popular snacks in Britain? I'm a bad person to ask for this, because as we're going to discover, I don't really like chocolate, or sweets, or ice cream, or fudge, or toffee, or any of these traditional snacks, like lollipops, or sweets. How do you exist um, <laughs> without sweets? I get by on soft drinks, mostly. <laughs> so when it comes to snacks, I'm definitely not an authority. Mm -hmm. I do know that crisps are very popular, mm -hmm. and I'll let all our British viewers in on a secret here. Crisps in Ukraine are better. Much better. And I'm speaking with authority as a man who eats a lot of crisps. <laughs> I've stopped eating crisps in Britain, and it was easy for me to give up mm -hmm. crisps when I wanted to try and improve my physique and get in shape. It's dropped crisps instantly in Britain. Here, there's some brands like Lux. I can't do without... I don't know what they're putting in those crisps, but it's amazing. So, narcotics. A narcotics, eh? <laughs> okay. Well, that explains why they're so popular. But uh, yes, mm -hmm. obviously you have your crisps. We have pre-mixed fruit and yogurt, things like that. I'm sure that's popular here too. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a big con controversy recently. So we have shops a bit like Kulanichi here, mm -hmm. called Greg's and Sayers. Mm -hmm. I'm sure our viewers might know, but maybe our viewers from Ukraine don't know, Greg's recently released a vegan sausage roll. So a sausage roll is a pastry full mm -hmm. of meat, usually, mm -hmm. and it's all wrapped in yeah. pastry. And the most recent invention released by Greg's this year was the vegan sausage roll. And a lot of people liked it, a lot of people hated it, everybody wanted to try it. And imagine if you went to Kulinichi, and they had a new, <laughs> they had a new meal, yeah. and you said, could I get, uh, well, you have these sausage roll here. And they mm -hmm. said, oh no, we're sold out of sausage rolls, they're too popular. I can imagine. People queued to buy this new dish. So there's a snack from Britain that's been very popular recently, it's been all over the news. The vegan sausage roll. I haven't tried it myself yet, I was here when it was released. But when I, no? No, no. It's supposed to be very tasty, I'm going to try it when I go back. I'm afraid it's not natural. Nothing's natural. It can be a No garlic. British food is natural. Okay. And what's your favourite meal? My favourite meal? That you can eat every day. That's a tough one. Because while there's a lot of things I don't like, there's a few things I really like. When I was younger, it used to be Chinese ribs. I loved ribs when I was young. Yes. Mm -hmm. In barbecue sauce or in uh, rib sauce. And then, since I've come to Ukraine, because it's quite cheap compared to Britain, I've started to enjoy sushi quite a lot. That's relatively easy to eat for me. What else could I eat every day? I do start every day off with peanut butter and jam on toast. That's also British, that's more American, but I do like it. That's what you can't get here for breakfast. Crumpets. Yeah. Oh, I love crumpets. Bit of peanut butter on a crumpet, maybe a bit of jam, mm -hmm. nice cup of tea. I miss crumpets a lot. That's one of the big things I miss from Britain. Yeah, I think I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what about the Ukrainian cuisine? Have you tried something yes. traditional? Yes. I really like salo, although I don't eat it a lot because salo, for our British viewers, is mostly just pig fat. <laughs> uh, I like borscht, although I don't eat it all the time. Mm -hmm. I eat it occasionally. Varaniki. Mm -hmm are very good, uh, and all sorts of different dumplings, the different types you get here, baraniki, mm. pumeni, pierogi, <laughs> oh, there's all these different words we don't have in English, <laughs> they're wonderful. I quite like something here that is shared amongst other countries and Baltic states too, mm -hmm. nice bit of herring mm. with potatoes and a bit of vodka mm. and some butter, nice and simple, 
chilled vodka. Oh, that's gorgeous. I haven't had that in a few months, though. So maybe this weekend I'll treat myself. Mm. Sounds like a good plan. That's the plan, yeah. Uh, and uh, could you recommend a place in Kharkiv where to go? So how much money are you looking to spend? I don't know. Just... One of my favorite cheap places, mm -hmm. not a place for Ukrainian cuisine, it's a place for Georgian cuisine, mm. and it's called Tbilisimo, which is a combination, a little uh, joke between Tbilisi, mm -hmm. the capital of Georgia, and Bellissimo, mm -hmm. Italian for the most beautiful. So Tbilisimo, <laughs> put it together. And that is extremely cheap, but very hearty Georgian food made by real Georgian people. And you can meet them on the way in and chat and see and sit. And that is uh, one of my favorite places to eat at the moment. It's also very near to where I live, so I have to be careful mm -hmm. not to spend all my time eating lobio, that's beans, with chadi, cornmeal bread, uh, kinkali, more dumplings. Oh yes, they're badrijani, the uh, mm -hmm. walnut paste wrapped in aubergine. Yeah, oh, I could eat all of that all the time. I have to be very, very careful. So that's my favorite cheap place at the moment to Definitely eat. Definitely go there. It's absolutely worth it. You might have to wait a while, but it's absolutely 100% recommended. That's my, my tip. And Peter, could you, tell, uh, could you give us uh, some adjectives to describe food and it's tasty? Oh, there's some very odd ones. So obviously we all know delicious and tasty, as you said. But there's some very British ones that may not travel across the Atlantic, I don't know. Maybe Americans see these as being a bit stereotypical. Like scrumptious. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember some other ones. There's some wonderful ones in Roald Dahl, if you ever read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So all of these invented words. But yes, uh, you can get by on delicious alone. Some people mm -hmm. in Britain use an adjective that I don't agree with, especially in Liverpool. Some people call food fit or gorgeous. Gorgeous food, yeah. Yeah, which for me is more visual. But again, <laughs> I'm peculiar. I wouldn't describe food as fit, uh, which doesn't mean healthy, just means really good. Uh, that seems very odd to me, but I've heard people say it. So, yeah, you can <laughs> sometimes use visual adjectives for food, taste adjectives. Depends on how you're feeling. Great. So, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I hope to see you very soon. Oh, maybe over uh, some kinkali? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah sure. <laughs>